Hey, what's going on everyone? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. Hope you all are doing well. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by. We pretty much just try to take uh, either riding mowers, zero turns, push mowers, anything usually small engine related, and uh, try to fix it up, see if we can get it going, and try to turn it for a profit. So it's kind of a side hustle and learning and having some fun. So on today's agenda, we have the $100 zero turn. So I got this in a package deal. A uh, guy was moving and he had this and well, you guys can see my plethora of mowers out here, but there's a John Deere way out there that uh, so for 200 bucks, he said, come get them. He didn't know what was going on with them. He had pulled them out of uh, some a customer of his backyard. Um, he did some lawn care for them and they had a couple of mowers that had been sitting for a while so so far what i know on this machine is i did he said it won't start um i checked to make sure that all the levers were in the right position and I'm getting nothing on the key switch we are at 617 hours it's pretty crusty uh, overall, the deck seems to be in fair shape. Um, pretty solid on this one. I don't know what gauge it is, but it's it's definitely beefy. It is the deck is free. I've looked underneath. There is a new um, drive belt. Let's see. The deck belt looks like it was pretty worn. We've got a Briggs and Stratton. I'm unsure of the horsepower on this one. It is a twin. And let's see if I can see the year on this thing. It's like super rusty. I'm honestly not sure the year on this. I'll have to look a little bit more. But overall, you can see the condition it's in. There was a battery in here. The cables actually look, this cable almost looks brand new. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where we're at with it. So let me, uh, I've got to pull a mower out of the shop. We're going to pull this in here and let's dive in and start troubleshooting. So, one thing I didn't mention earlier is the motor does spin over free. It feels like it has plenty of compression. So, um, I had smelled the fuel in the tank originally, and it smells like pretty fresh gas. I don't know if the guy tried to put some gas in here and started or what was going on. He didn't seem like he had much for answers. Uh, let's see. I don't think this is the original seat on here. And the seat safety has been bypassed with a jumper. So I don't think that's an issue. Let's see what else. I guess let's go ahead and we'll just do some quick preliminary stuff as far as checking the oil and the air filter. And we'll check the battery voltage go from there <clears throat> so oil looks really clean I mean a little used but clean it's not dark dark and it's almost up to the full line I don't know if you guys can see that or not figured for a hundred bucks I couldn't really go too wrong with this even if it ends up being a parts machine filter is seen better days but doesn't seem to be packed maybe it got wet at some point and seems like it kind of closed itself up a little bit <clears throat> a couple of old dead cockroaches in there too 
so let's see. We'll go ahead and check the battery voltage on here. All right, I was trying to get this set up because it's a little hard to do one-handed, so. But 12.43, so that should be plenty of power. <clears throat> Let's see. Like I said earlier, this battery wire looks pretty good. And so does the one coming off the solenoid to the starter on here. A little corrosion, but this wire still, you can see all the copper doesn't seem to be too corroded. There's our signal wire that triggers the solenoid to put power to the starter. And this is a three post, so I could have a problem with grounding because this, the way the three posts work, your bolts that mount the solenoid are actually your ground. On a four post, you have a separate wire that goes into your solenoid, and that's grounded somewhere else on the frame. But really, that's all the difference between a three post and a four post. Um, let's see. Check some fuses on here. I don't even know where the fuses are on this machine. Just had the one safety wire. Oh, there's a fuse right there, seven and a half. These are all of our relays. Could have a bad relay. I don't know. I had that. I don't know if, if you guys have ever seen the other zero turn video on that Arians I had. I had a heck of a time figuring out the electrical on that, and it ended up being. Uh, a relay that was bad and it caused all kinds of chaos. Oh, there's another fuse down there too. Can't tell if that's melted or not. Let me, uh, let me get this set up with the multimeter because I can't even read this one and we'll just see if we've got a uh, continuity through because the way these fuses are, you can put a lead on each side and test for continuity if you can't tell for sure if the fuse is blown or not. And there's also a 20 amp down there. But let me get you guys set up and we'll test these real quick. All right, so a quick way to check your fuses, if you have a multimeter, set it to continuity. I'm just gonna check to make sure that it's working. All right, so we have contact between the two. And yes, this fuse is good. Let's take a look at the other one. I've got a that 20 amp down here. Oh my lord. I realized the camera was so tripod was so tight. If you guys can see that or not this one looks blown right off the bat interesting and this is our 20 I mean normally you can visually check I can I can see this one's broken but you could see on this other one it's got like a a haze or something on the plastic Yeah, this one's, this one's shot. All right, let me see, get y'all off the tripod. I should have some fuses in here. Bought a kit a while back with a bunch in here. Yeah, that's a 20. So, I gotta remember which one it was. So the upper one was the seven and a half. Make sure I got the key off. Could be something in here that's just causing a, a dead short though. 
because normally these don't pop unless there's a short or maybe battery didn't get connected right or something like that. All right, those are both in. Turn the key on accessories, see if we hear anything. Oh yeah. I don't know what that is. Oh, that must be the relays. What about the fuel solenoid? Sorry. Oh yeah. All right, so we're getting power. Let's see. I guess, let's make sure that we've got our... So that safety, got the brake safety. These ones have one on each side. Just trying to make sure everything is depressed. I know that there was the jumper wire here. This one should be it, PTO. Actually, let's see if the PTO, that might be what's shorting it out. On accessory. Nope, I can hear it. All right, well, wouldn't that be something if it was just a fuse? All right, let me get you guys set up here in the tripod. We'll see if we can get a, to at least turn over. All right, well, everything seems to be hooked up. We checked battery voltage. We know we had like 12.4 on there. We had the blown fuse, the safety switches are in, so we should be able to at least turn it over if the starter's gonna work. All right, we're turning over, we're making progress. So there is a fuel shut off on here that's open. I see a little bit of fuel in the, uh, the filter here. Um, choke, I think it's stuck. I don't even know which one is the choke lever. I don't know if you guys can see or not. Oh man, yep, it came loose. All right, we got working choke. Uh, let's crank it for a minute and see. No way, that was just a fuse and it just cranked up. <laughs> that, all right, well, before I get ahead of myself, that's crazy. <laughs> Why didn't anybody check the fuse? <laughs> um, all right, well, I know the oil was good enough to run it. These are sealed hydros on this one. They just have a vent line i did look initially to see if there was any like leaking on the hydros because that's usually like my biggest concern with zero turns is if you've leaked out all the fluid and they burned up a pump i mean that's basically the most expensive part i mean i can find engine i have engines here for this i mean i've got i don't know three or four down here on the ground they're not twin cylinders but i've got a bunch outside um man that is nuts. Well, let's crank it up and see if this thing will move. All right, well, of course, I'm about to pull this thing out and it's raining. It has been raining here 
in southeast North Carolina for it feels like a month now. My yard is a total swamp. It's been a mess. I can't get over it. There's no way that it's just the fuse on this. I mean, obviously it needs some other stuff. Oh, I did want to check. Let's check out the, uh, I'll show y'all that deck belt. There was like chunks missing off from it. <clears throat> yeah, this thing is caked, but I don't know if you can see that huge. Oh, let me see if I can bring it around. I mean, the, the deck spins nice. There it is. You can see that massive chunk missing out, and it's all cracked up. And then, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's brand new, or at least it looks pretty new, Kevlar belt. Or one of the, like, the tractor supply belts. All right. Well, let's see if it'll move. It's the next big thing on here, right? Will it move? Ugh. All right. So there's the deck height adjustment on here. All we've got for controls is choke throttle and a PTO. And it just has the single gas tank on this one and a cubby seat's actually pretty comfortable for as gross as it is i think that that uh solenoid probably needs a better connection too the starter sounds a little rusty man i can't believe how good this thing sounds Muffler is super quiet. Alright, so. Oh, hold on.
There is no way that you could have paid me to know that this machine would run that well looking at it. I mean, you guys saw there's like moss growing out of the seat. Um, I mean, it looks like it's been sitting here or sitting at the guy's place for at least a year. Now, the battery did say uh, 21 July 20th. So, two years ago, the battery was serviced, because this is a June 2020 battery. I just can't believe how smooth this Briggs is running on here. Hydras really don't seem, uh, seem too bad. I mean, we'll have to let them really warm up and test it and do some cutting to make sure that they're, they're good. And maybe end up changing out the fluid, but... I can't believe the deck was that quiet too. Wow, this is crazy. Honestly, it's just super crusty. All right, well, I did a little bit of research and this uh, Poulon is the same as the, I don't know if you guys can see it, the Husqvarna 4822 of the time. Uh, I was able to kind of get some oil uh, on that rusty valve cover there and this is a 2006 so this Poulon is the same as the uh, Husqvarna of the time so I believe this is a 22 horse twin and I did a little bit of looking around let me get the flashlight on some of the things we are going to need which will have to be for a part two but I did notice on the front mount here it's cracked and it's starting to pull out of the deck here so we are going to have to do some deck work on this i'd like to get it off anyways sand the whole thing down we'll repaint but in the meantime we will check all the pulleys and spindles make sure that they are good they feel good but we'll see if there's any other damages get this i can uh weld um that mount back on see if i have a front roller because the uh, front roller piece anti-scalp was missing and I was also looking just at the hydro units on here and let's see if I can get you in there to see on the other side over there is the left side hydro and you can see the fan blades are all there and then on this side the bar is right in the way uh, right underneath of the pulley is supposed to be the fan and there are no fan blades left on it so at some point I'm guessing the belt came off and shredded the fan so to keep these hydros cool it needs to have that that fan on top of it so we will have to figure out a part number for the fan on here get the part number and get a new deck belt and let's see what else was it I looked at the blades they are still in good enough shape we'll check balance on them make sure there's nothing bent but they still have a good sharp edge on some of it it's just the tips are a little dull and there is some damage on this inner liner where it looks like it got hung up on something and then we just got some build up so We'll definitely have some deck work to do on here and then besides that it's going to be probably just putting a new uh, plastic fan on the hydro and then a lot of cleaning up so um yeah let's see what else we're going to do and then we'll wrap it up all right well i think we're going to pretty much start recapping everything we've done here today so i can get some parts on order for this but we've got a hundred dollars in the unit itself I'm going to guess we may have another $100 in parts, I guess, between the fan and the belt. The, I don't know if y'all saw this belt earlier. This is the, it was just sitting on here. It was the one from that other John Deere. But realistically, we just have some work to do on the mowing deck as far as getting it cleaned up, uh, checking to see if it needs any more welding besides that mount. The whole machine needs a good pressure washing and going over, um, you know, lubing everything up. 
I don't I don't think we're gonna be hurting on this one as long as it's uh the hydros are good after a little bit of runtime. But that is crazy. I still can't believe that I don't they just didn't even check the fuses. It's like usually one of the first things, but you know, a lot of people don't know what they're looking at. A lot of people change out parts that don't need to be changed. So, you know, this one was an easy fix. There's a lot of times it's not could be you know a short in the harness you could have uh, a slew of issues that would cause this so we just started with the basics and uh, worked our way around found a blown fuse and I don't know how long this thing's been sitting but it literally cranked up and ran like it was started yesterday so I'm excited hopefully you guys are too and we will continue on with this uh, may have another video in the meantime but we will get to part two on this and we'll get the zero turn looking sharp and cutting and mowing and uh, having some fun. So I really appreciate y'all checking out the channel and uh, stay tuned for some new videos coming up. And uh, I greatly appreciate it. So on that note, let freedom ring, let those small engines sing. I'll see you all next time.